We'll do one more video from Math Pace 1074. This is right before the very last checkup. And there's a lot covered in there about fractions and decimals, which can really um, be a challenge for junior high students. And uh, so we want to do a quick video to remind you about these things that you have studied and get you ready for the checkup. And then I want to go back and look at page 46 because there's some story problems on page 46. And uh, so I'll erase the board and we'll get you started anyway so that you can then finish those on your own. But um, let's talk about some of these types of problems. And um, you, on, for all of these types, you did a whole page, okay? But now we're at the end, ready for a checkup, and uh, you've got to remember how to do all of them and keep the procedure straight. Let's take turning a fraction into a decimal. And how do we do that? So here I have the fraction 5 twelfths. So to turn it into a decimal, I take the top number and put it under the doghouse, as I like to call it. And then I'm just going to add a bunch of zeros, okay? We'll see how far we have to go. And times are dividing by 4. Now notice I bring the decimals straight up in the answer. And then we just put these zeros here. 12 will go into that 4 times, which is 48. Subtract, we get 20. That will go once. Bring down an 8, okay, and get 6. That would be 72, and that's going to give me another 8, which is be another 6, and another 6, and another 6. And we could just keep going and going and going, okay? And so this is called a repeating pattern. And so what we do in a case like that is we put a bar over the first digit, sometimes it's two digits, but the digit that's repeating and then we can get rid of the rest, okay? So the six is the repeating digit. Don't put it over the whole thing, not the whole 416, just the six. All right, so we have now turned it, which is a good idea to put a zero in front of the decimal, okay? So that would be the answer for 5 twelfths. Let's take a look at subtraction. <clears throat> when we are subtracting decimal numbers, and I always like to tell my students this, we need to line up the decimals like buttons on a shirt, okay? So to add or subtract, line up those decimals. So I'm going to rewrite this as 81.3, line up the 27.56 underneath it, and I'm going to subtract. Now we have a little problem. There's nothing above the 6. So sometimes students are tempted to just bring the 6 down, but no, we can't do that. We have to subtract 6 from something. So we have to put a placeholder in there. We put a 0 above that, and now I can subtract 6 from 10, but I had to borrow to make that a 2. I'm not going to be able to subtract 5 from 2, so I have to borrow to make that a 12. All right? And then I can't borrow 7 from 0, so I have to borrow from that and make that a 10. All right, so you know how to do borrowing. And so from that point, it's just a matter of subtracting, and the decimal will come straight down. Let's look at multiplication. Now, when we're multiplying, you don't worry about the decimals. You do not line up the decimals. You just pretend like the decimals are not there for this first step. Just multiply the numbers. So 6 times 8 is 48. 8 times 0 plus 4, bring down, all right, and then the 8. Now we go back and we count how many decimal places are there. I have 1, 2, and then I have 1 in this number, so I have 3 decimal places total. And so then we come from the right and we bring the decimal over 1, 2, 3. So the answer would be 0 0.848. We count all three of these, bring the decimal over three places in the answer. Let's talk about dividing, all right? When we are dividing decimal numbers, we have to move the decimal in the divisor, the number outside the doghouse, and it has to come all the way behind this number. So you ask yourself, how many places did I have to move the decimal to get it here? And the answer in this case is twice. 
So we have to do the same thing with the number under the doghouse. I'm going to move the decimal twice. So I'm going to rewrite this. This is always a good idea to do on your scrap paper, is rewrite the problem with the decimal moved. One, two, one, two, all right, and then bring it straight up. And now I can divide 6 into 54. That goes 9 times. And I have the decimal over here, but the 9 here. The answer is not 9, because 6 times 9 is 54. I need to get 540. So we have to put that placeholder at 0. So the answer is 90. Okay? And you can check any of these. You could take 90 times 0 0.06, and then move the decimal, and you would have the answer. All right, let's talk quickly about this problem right here. When we are multiplying, um, I meant to make this 100. All right, we're multiplying, ah, let's make it 1,000. Multiplying or dividing by 10 or 100 or 1,000, any multiple of 10, we have all those zeros. We should be able to do this just with our mind. You can do this mentally, okay? It's a lot faster. We count the zeros, okay? If we're dividing, we're going to be moving the decimal to the left. If we're going to multiply, we count the zeros and we move the decimal that many places to the right. So this answer would become 0 0.0375 because I'm dividing by 100. So I move the decimal once, twice, Okay, to get in front of this, and then we have the zero placeholder in front. Times a thousand, three zeros. I'm going to move the decimal one, two, okay, three, seven, five, and another zero to get it behind there. All right, so just a reminder there, those should be fairly easy. Let's take this number now, and the last thing on this checkup is rounding to the nearest tenth, to the nearest hundredth, to the nearest thousandth. Let's remind ourselves about place value <clears throat> when we're going to the left of the decimal. The first place value is ones, and then we have tens and hundreds, okay, etc. But to the right of the decimal, there is no such place value as once. So we have to start with tenths. Okay, you have to kind of spit and get that in there. Tenths, and then hundredths. And then thousandths. All right, and the next one would be ten thousandths. And so we, it, the same, we move in the same direction. You have tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, just as we would be going to the left. Okay, except we're going to the right. If I'm rounding this to the nearest tenth, that means I'm going to draw a line here, and the number is going to stop. However, we look at the digit to the right of that to determine if this needs to stay a 2 or if it gets rounded up. And as you recall, the key number is 5. If it's 5 or more, then I need to round this 2 up to a 3. Okay? If it were less, then I, then I wouldn't. Let's take the next one. I'm going to round to the nearest hundredth. So this is the tenths place. This is hundredth place. That means that's the last place value that should be in our answer. So I'm going to stop with this digit, but I need to look at the next digit, and oh, I can easily see that's more than 5. And so this is going to round up to a 6. So this answer would be 7.26. And then rounding to the nearest thousandth means rounding to there. And in this case, the 3 is less than 5. So that's not going to change this digit. It's not going to run down. It doesn't become a 6. It's just going to stay a 7. So this would become 7.257. Okay? So hopefully that quick review will help you feel a little more confident on the types of problems that you're going to have on page 47, 48. Now let's go back to page 46. And I want you to open your to page 46. We're not going to do the entire problem for you, but I want to ask you some questions that will kind of help you get started and uh, set them up. Because these are, these are thinking problems, and uh, 
That can be kind of tough for junior high students. We don't like to do that, you know? Eww. Let's look at the first problem here, number nine. It says the average rainfall in Highland City, Highland, for the month of March is 4.9 inches. April is 4.4 inches. May is 4.9. June is 3.6. Then it says what is the estimated and actual rainfall for these four months? All right, so they're asking a whole bunch of questions here. Number one, we are in this, what this whole page is about is we're estimating versus doing actual. Let's first estimate, or in other words, round off these numbers. And whenever we do that, we round it to the nearest whole number. So let's take the March number. That was 4.9, so we round that to the nearest number, and it's 5. April is 4.4, so we round that off and we get 4, okay, are you with me? May is 4.9 again, so we round that off to 5. June is 3.6, so we can round that off to 4. So these are the estimated. And then the question is, what was the estimated and actual rainfall for the four months? So that means you're going to get the total, in other words, all right? So I'm not going to do that step for you. You can do that. You're just adding these together to get a total. And then you add the actual numbers, okay? Being careful to keep the decimals lined up like buttons on a shirt. And then carry whatever, keep the decimals straight down in your answer. And that would be your actual um, rainfall. Let's look at number 10. An object is 26.1 centimeters long. A second object is 48.6. What is their difference in length? Okay, now you think about difference. Difference is a very specific math term. It means to subtract two numbers, the answer to a subtraction problem. Now, before we do the actual, we want to do an estimated. So round this off to the nearest whole number, round this one off to the nearest whole number, and then subtract those two numbers and you'll have the estimated. Then go back, line these up, keeping them the decimals lined up like buttons on a shirt, subtract and you will have the actual difference. Now number 11 is a little trickier, I think. He, <clears throat> a botanist measured the growth of certain types of plants. He found that his giant bamboo grew an average of, wow, 42.75 centimeters per day. If it was 83 centimeters tall when he began, how tall was it at the end of a week? Sometimes I think it's helpful to draw a picture, okay? So let's say at the end of the first week, this was 83 centimeters tall. And then how many days? It says at the end of one week. So I need to add some growth for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days. Looks like that bamboo's getting thicker too as it goes up. <laughs> All right, each of those is 42.75. So 42.75 centimeters, 42.75. And I'm not going to write that for all seven of those, but you get the idea, okay? And it started with 83, and then we're adding 42.75 for each day. And the question is, how tall is it at the end of the week? All right, so this is a problem where I think a picture can help you figure out how to solve it. Now again, I'm not going to solve this one any further for you. There's two or three different ways you could uh, finish setting that up and solving that, but I'll let you finish that on your own, okay? <clears throat> Let's think about number 12. It says that the same botanist uh, found that a white oak tree grew 38 centimeters taller in one year. Okay, it grew 38 centimeters in one year how much did the tree grow per month? Oh wait, you know what, before we do that, back on number 11, again, it's talking about estimated. So we need to first take those numbers and round them off to, it looks like, um, 
Well, it says in the directions to the nearest whole number. So we'll leave the 83, but the 42.75, we can round that off to 43. And then do that seven times and then add that to the 83. Okay, so you estimate it first, then do the actual. So on this one, um, the estimated, we have 38 and then 12 months, right? And uh, to figure out how much growth per month, can you see that that would have to be a division problem? Okay, and so you'll divide that and get and round that off to the nearest whole number for the estimated and then figure out the actual. So this is just some, they're trying to get you to think, do some application of these types of percent, I mean uh, decimal, uh, decimal problems, all right, and, and estimating. So hopefully you will do well on this checkup and then you're uh, up to a self-test. Before you do pay 75, make sure you have your parents watch the video that I have giving them some tips about how to help you be successful with Pace 1075 in math. All right, thanks for watching.